Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. A uh, bit of a different video this one. I thought I'd show you some of the cars at the lower end of the spectrum that, uh, well, not necessarily we even deal in, normally we trade on, but this was a car we've taken in part exchange. You've probably seen the description or the title of the video. This is our 250 pound Mercedes A-Class. Let's, uh, let's go and have a look and find out why was it 250 pounds. Okay, so here it is, our 61 plate Mercedes A-Class. And if I have a look at the back, it is an A160 blue efficiency. It's actually a 1.5 petrol. And as we look around it, it's actually really tidy for the age. Um, there's a few little marks, like a little scuff there. Uh, let's have a look around. Like incredibly even the uh, the lenses on the headlights look really good. The wheel trims have got a few scuffs, but you know, nothing major. Um, another little scuff there. I'm pretty sure that'll polish out. A few little chips on the back bumper. Uh, worst bit being this rear quarter has clearly been painted at some point. There's a couple of little gouges there where someone's gone into something, but I don't know if you can see how well you can see it on this camera, but you can see what looks like primer coming through the paint there, basically. Uh, so I think they've had that repainted and, um, don't know, something's gone wrong with the painting process. I'm not a paint expert, but I imagine not enough uh, bottom coat, top coat, coat, put a coat on it, it hasn't got a coat. Uh, either way, the primer's coming through the paint. But other than that, this car's in really good condition. Um, mileage wise, let's see if we can get that to display point out two keys both in full working order and good condition 98,481 miles it's a five-speed manual it's got steering wheel controls clearly a radio let's turn that off um, air conditioning albeit it needs a recharge um, has it got cruise control no burn it um, so yeah, it's even got, I think, full Mercedes history. So why did we only give 250 pounds for it? Well, I haven't actually got any uh, footage to show you with that, but it was just making horrendous noise when it came apart exchange. It was actually my colleague, uh, Dan, it's kind of like general manager of Barrow Motors, if you like, um, took this in part exchange and yeah, it was rattling away. Basically sounded like it needed a timing chain. And as I've said in previous videos, talking about the more modern A-Class, this thing is like a little block of Swiss cheese and everything is absolutely jammed in there. So, uh, but obviously there's going to be time labor involved. And then being the age that it is, the mileage it is, it's not something that we'd normally necessarily buy in to stock at Borough Motors. Um, of course, we've got to think, we've got to put a warranty on this car. If something goes wrong with it, we're going to have to fix it. So ordinarily, this wouldn't be something that I would be looking to stock, but, um, that's why we only gave 250 pounds for it. You know, we can scrap it and maybe only lose 50 quid. It's not, it's not a very heavy car. Prices are good at the moment, but you're not going to make your money back. But you know, worst case scenario, we can scrap it. We're not going to lose that much money. And we factored that into the deal. So why have I still got it? I thought, I know what, I'll drive this car and I'll just run it into the ground. You know, it's, it's got like three quarters of a tank left in it at this point. I may as well drive it. It's just a bit of noise. And if it breaks down on me, one of the guys will come pick me up in the recovery truck. I got to keep coming out here to the farm, looking after the horses and stuff with a girlfriend. So why not? And that's exactly what I did, but actually driving it, I thought it's not making this noise all the time. And it's mainly between changing gears. It's making a real like grunching noise. So I thought maybe it's just a gearbox and maybe a gearbox is easier to change and get to one of these. And then the engine is to get out and do all that work. So, um, so I asked one of the mechanics, Stefan again, smashing out of the park as usual, uh, gets on the, gets on the ramp, has a look at it. And he says, oh, you know what? I don't think that's the timing chain at all. I think that is the water pump and you don't even have to take the whole engine out to do that i think you can drop one side of the engine and you can change the water pump how much is a water pump let's say i don't even know 50 quid i was like do it definitely this car still should be you know like two and a half thousand or something if we can fix it for under a couple hundred quid we're onto an absolute winner here
Ooh. Silky smooth. Okay, so it turned out it wasn't actually the water pump, it was the bottom pulley on the engine, which for all I know could have been cheaper than the thing, but I know we're not talking really hundreds of pounds of uh, stuff here. If I can figure out and finally dig out the invoices later, I'll put that here. Uh, how much we've actually spent and what the car owes us now, but it's sounding amazing, so I think let's drive it, see what else it needs. Well, first impressions of the A-Class are actually really good. Despite feeling like I'm in a car that was made in 2001, not 2011, uh, everything mechanically feels great. It's just, it just feels incredibly dated in here. And it's not very exciting either. And for a Mercedes, you know, a premium brand, it's, it is plastic city in here, including the steering wheel. Mercedes steering wheels are one of my bugbears. They've really done a, I don't know what year on was, let's say from, I think around 2011, 2012, they've done a really good job of updating things inside the cabin um, and making the steering wheels, etc., feel a bit more special. Because they used to be just these slabs of black plastic and they were just dull and boring. And, for me, a steering wheel can be one of the most important parts of a car. It's what I'm holding onto when I'm driving it. It's what I'm staring at the whole time. So I want it to feel special, uh, especially if I'm driving a Mercedes. Albeit this is, you know, a run of the mill Mercedes, but someone's still gonna feel like they've got a Mercedes part on the drive. It's got the, the three crested triangle badge thing on the front. Um, you know, this is, this, this is the sort of car that would have sold to the well-to-do lady of the household who wanted to have something slightly nicer than the neighbor's 4ka so um yeah you would expect it slightly better inside um but the gearbox now feels great it feels perfectly at least perfectly fine it's nothing exciting but you know it's very easy to use the clutch feels good in fact i think the clutch was changed last year by the previous owner with mercedes or was it it might not be mercedes that might have been completely like it's not quick by any means, but it doesn't feel underpowered uh, for a small little petrol engine. Sometimes you can feel like you really have to work the clutch and throttle balance in order to get the thing moving, but no such issues here. It drives effortlessly, really. Um, yeah, I, I can't say too much negative about it. The brakes feel good. There's no suspension knocks. Um, I think even the tires are, are good on this, even if they're budgets. Um, I think probably what's happened here, as I think I've seemed to see quite a lot with uh, part exchange cars, especially a part exchange car where the customer takes great pride in it having been dealer maintained, that I think last year they probably spent £800 or so on having a clutch fitted in this. And they spent, you know, maybe three, £400 a year with Mercedes having it serviced. And it gets to a certain point where they're you know, they, they've got, they're facing another big bill, or they've just paid a big bill, for example, last year. Maybe they spent over a thousand pounds on servicing and a clutch. And then six months down the line, it starts making this weird rattling noise. And they think, do you know what? Do I really want to spend more money on this car? Or is it time to get a new one? At this point, I'd rather just get what I can for it and get into something that I really want because I've kind of fallen out of love with this car. And I think that happens a lot. I'd say, especially with dealer maintained cars, because they've probably spent so much money on having them maintained. Um, and people tend to think it's time to get rid of it now while it's still running. So in a sense, we've lucked out there because it wasn't perhaps as quite as bad as the customer or we initially thought it was gonna be. Um, but that's just the risk you take, I guess. That was a risk we took buying it, potentially gonna lose money just scrapping it. And it's the risk the customer takes saying, do I just take this, uh, you know, 250 pounds I've been offered, get into my new car. And most customers, that's what they want. It's just an easy transaction that adds value. I think all in all, maybe this car is going to stand us around 500 pounds. Um, again, if I can figure out an exact figure, I'll put it down here. Um, and we'll stick it on the forecourt. We're quite low on stock. I think it's a quite smart little thing. Some, you know, someone's going to come along either for a first car, a little family car, a lovely old lady from the village is going to come in, she's going to want it. Um, and I think it's going to be a fairly decent, honest little car. Um, they are out there. You're not always going to come across them. And 100% a 
owning a dealership and having people come to part exchange their cars for a more expensive, nicer car is always going to work in your favour that way. But don't get me wrong, I've had some absolute dogs as well. And I wish, uh, now that I'm making some more of these YouTube videos, that I, I really wish I had make a point, and in future I will, of hopefully I won't get too many. But if I do, the ones where I've been tucked up an absolute treat, you know, ones where the customer comes in and they, you give them a part exchange for their car on 200,000 miles, and say, yeah, look, as long as it's all straight and, you know, it works as it, we can give you, you know, 400 quid and they're like oh yeah that'd be great no problem at all thanks so much and then once the deal's done they've paid and they're walking out the door oh i couldn't possibly leave it would be on my conscience if i didn't tell you that um there's a battery drain on there so the battery always drains we can never find it we thought it was the radio we changed the radio it wasn't um so you have to jump start it every day oh thanks your conscience couldn't take that but you you still had to tell me on the way out well, what, what is this fool doing what are you doing? Uh, sorry, got stuck here waiting for uh, Mr. Confused Lorry Driver who's reversing up the street. Um, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Or people would come in and say, oh, could you give me a rough idea of the part exchange value on my car? I've got a Honda Civic on X amount of miles and it's a, it's a 2010. Sure, I'll take that on the computer. Uh, you know, if, you know, assume it's all good, I, I could give you a thousand. Oh, really? I could take a thousand? Yeah, that'd be great. I'm like, okay, well, actually, we'll buy the car right now. And me being me, I'm like, great, let's just get the deal done. Da -da 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 -da. And then the mechanic's going, have you looked at that car? And every panel's been painted and whatever. So it swings and roundabouts. You get stitched right up. Uh, and sometimes you get a little gem when you're not expecting it. Um, I think that's the case on this occasion. And I guess it goes to show they are out there. If you're willing to do a little bit of work, you can fix up some cars and um, have a tidy little profit in them. Anyway, that's it. I'm back at the garage. I've got a million and one things to do, so as soon as I can, I'll see you in the next video.